Hi, welcome to this video in linear programming duality. This video is on the topic of strong duality. Strong duality is in the same spirit as that of weak duality, which was a topic that we discussed a few videos ago, but this will give further properties on the relationship between a primal dual pair of linear programs. So if you recall from that video on weak duality that we did, uh, we had this chart towards the end which indicated possible outcomes of primal dual pairs, where uh, we were able to deduce some of the uh, things that were possible and impossible. So first of all, every linear program is either optimal, unbounded, or infeasible. Those are the only three things that could happen for any linear program ever, so it satisfies exactly one of those. Um, so the primal, if we consider a primal dual pair, the primal uh, will satisfy one of those three things, the dual will satisfy one of those three things, so then there's nine potential outcomes for the uh, primal dual pair. Three for the primal, three for the dual, three times three is, uh, three times three is nine, so uh, nine options there. Um, so at a glance, there's nine things that could happen um, in terms of this uh, uh, categorization here, but, uh, but in fact, weak duality showed us that some of these things could not happen, um, and that was indicated by these red X's. Uh, so for example, it is impossible to have a primal linear program which is unbounded while the dual is also unbounded. That simply can never happen. Um, and so these red X's indicated things uh, that could never happen for a primal dual pair, um, and these green check marks indicated things that could happen. Either we uh, explicitly demonstrated that they could happen, or we logically deduced that they could happen and must happen. Um, but, uh, but either way, these are things that, that could happen for the green check marks. Finally, there were these blue question marks. So these were things that uh, were not able to be addressed using weak duality alone. And so this is what we're going to be doing with strong duality now. Strong duality is going to uh, give us the necessary information to be able to uh, fill out this, this chart, basically. We can find out, for instance, does there exist a primal dual pair where the primal has an optimal solution and the dual is infeasible? Is that possible? Yes or no? We don't currently know. Strong duality is going to give us the answer. Uh, so, so the goal for this video is to complete the table here. So in, explicitly we want to, um, specifically I should say, we want to fill in these three uh, blue question marks here. Um, so these, the one on the top right and bottom left, uh, those will be explicitly given by strong duality. Uh, and then the one on the bottom right, we will uh, do a construction to demonstrate uh, whether or not it's possible. So that's what we're going to be doing in this video. We're going to be uh, deducing these three things. Okay, so first of all, what is the statement of strong duality? We need that before we can go on. So, um, so here's what the statement is. So let P and D be a primal dual pair. So P is the primal, D is the dual. And so if P has an optimal solution, so that's our hypothesis. If P has an optimal solution, then D does too. Uh, and moreover, the optimal solution of the primal is equal to the optimal solution of the, the dual. I, I, these are the values that they uh, come out to be. They're equal. Um, okay, so the hypothesis is saying that if uh, P is optimal, um, so then, then we're saying it must be the case that the dual also is an optimal solution. Um, and so what that would mean in terms of this chart then is that you can see, so the hypothesis is that the primal is an optimal solution. Um, uh, the dual then uh, cannot be infeasible because the conclusion is saying that uh, the dual must also have an optimal solution. So this green check mark here is the only thing that could happen assuming that the primal is optimal. Uh, so this uh, over here on the right is impossible according to strong duality. And so we're able to uh, fill in uh, this uh, um, on the right here. So um, what we can do is uh, we can place a red X there now. And that red X um, it means it's impossible, uh, which we just figured out because of this statement here. Uh, okay, and then by symmetric reasoning, um, the dual of the dual is the primal. So again, it doesn't matter which you call dual and which you call primal. One is just the dual of the other. So if we call the, the one here, uh, what we used to call dual, if that's uh, now the primal, uh, then this one that we called primal before is now the dual. So if we instead read down this column, um, the, uh, the dual is... Uh, being optimal must mean that the primal is also optimal. And so this, it means that the primal cannot be infeasible. So this blue question mark down here can also be replaced uh, with a, uh, a red X. So these, these things are impossible by the statement that was just made here. Okay, so this does not address uh, this, this bottom right one. We will come back to it in just a moment. Um, let me just say a few things about strong duality, the strong duality statement here first though. Um, we don't need the second statement right now. It's not relevant to our current analysis. 
um, this moreover optimal solutions are equal to each other. That's kind of, it's a fun fact and it's, it's pretty important. Uh, it'll be relevant in the future, but it's uh, just simply not relevant right now, but it is part of the statement of strong duality. Um, the part that's currently relevant to our analysis is uh, that if the primal has an optimal solution, the dual must also have an optimal solution. Now, unlike weak duality, this statement is not trivial. It is not obvious that this is necessarily true. I say weak duality was trivial. It was trivial in the sense that uh, it must be true by the construction of the dual. We, the point of constructing the dual in the way we did was so that weak duality did hold. So it came automatically that, the, that a weak duality held. It does not come automatically that strong duality holds. Um, it does hold, nonetheless. This is a true statement, but it's not trivial and it needs a proof. Um, so we're not going to prove it in this video uh, because, again, it's, it's, it's a bit of a tangential point to what we're trying to do right now. Um, so the proof is postponed for this video. Uh, look for a follow-up video to this video where we will include the proof of strong duality. Um, okay, so that's the first thing to say about uh, the statement. The second thing, uh, before we move on to addressing this final uh, possibility down here, is that we can reformulate uh, the statement, uh, or rephrase it, maybe is a better statement. But um, here's, here's how we can rephrase the statement when we combine the information of weak and strong duality. So, um, so we can combine that information. That gives us eight out of the nine possibilities. We now know whether they're possible or not. And, uh, and so now we can make this statement. What we can say in this uh, rephrasal of strong duality is uh, let P and D be the primal dual pair that we're considering. Um, okay, so if the primal and dual are both feasible, so now that's our hypothesis, uh, then what we can say is that both the primal and dual have optimal solutions, and again, the optimal and dual optimal solutions are equal. Um, now, the difference between the hypotheses is that in the statement above, what we said was that if the primal has an optimal solution, down here we're saying if the primal and dual are both feasible. Um, so that's a different hypothesis in both cases, but the conclusion is the same. Uh, both primal and dual have optimal solutions, uh, and uh, the optimal and dual solutions are equal to each other. Um, now, why uh, can we make that statement down here? So, so this statement below is Im immediately implied um, by this chart right here from, from the information that we filled out uh, currently. Um, and uh, so if we com combine the preliminary statements of weak and strong duality, we get this, and now this tells us uh, this rephrasal of strong duality. So uh, why can we see that? Well, um, Consider our hypothesis here. So if the primal and dual are both feasible, so how could that be possible? How is it possible that the primal and dual are both feasible? Well, look for the primal uh, chart here. Uh, so the options here are that the primal is either optimal or unbounded. It cannot be infeasible because that's not part of our uh, hypothesis. So it's either optimal or unbounded. Now, if the primal were unbounded, then what that must mean, reading across this chart then, is that it must be the case that the dual is infeasible. Um, that's the only one of those three options that's uh, viable here. Um, but if the dual's infeasible, then we still haven't satisfied the hypothesis. So there's no way that the primal could have been unbounded then. Uh, so that must mean the primal is optimal. And then if the primal is optimal, uh, again, if we look at this top row then, the only thing that can happen for the dual is that it is also uh, also has an optimal solution. And again, this uh, statement includes the uh, secondary statement that uh, the optimal and dual solutions are in fact equal to each other. Um, which is uh, not implied by this chart right here, but uh, but it's just a, it's we're just copying that statement over from the from the top here. Um, but you see that that the only way for the primal and dual to both be feasible is if uh, we're in this top left cell here, that the primal is optimal and the dual is also optimal. Um, so that's the conclusion that we're making here. So then the both the primal and dual have optimal solutions. Um, Okay, so that is uh, another way to say uh, strong duality. Sometimes you, when you say strong duality, this uh, can be what you mean because it, it captures all the information that we have so far. Um, okay, now let's address that final point. Maybe I should just go back up here. Uh, we still don't know um, whether it's possible to have the primal be infeasible and the dual also be infeasible. Um, but uh, I'll let the cat out of the bag now. I guess it is possible. So this, this can happen, and we're going to have an explicit uh, example that illustrates this now. Okay, so, um, so infeasible, infeasible pair cannot happen. So here's an example. So, um, so let me go back to the uh, 
black uh, marker here. Um, okay, so here is a primal linear program. So let's label it P, um, or it's what we'll consider to be the primal. And um, uh, so we can just take a look at it for a moment. He here it is. And uh, it's infeasible. That's the first thing to take note of, because what we're trying to do is construct a primal dual pair where both are infeasible. So the primal has to be infeasible in particular. Um, and uh, how can we see that the primal is infeasible? Well, uh, what we can do is we can look at the two constraints here. So we have the top constraint here, which I'll call 1, and uh, the second matrix constraint here, which we'll call 2. Um, so what we can do, so suppose that there was an x that did satisfy those two constraints. That's, it's actually impossible. That can't happen. Because if it could, if that could happen, then it would satisfy both 1 and 2 here, and then uh, you could add those two. 1 plus 2 would be a new thing, a new condition, that would also necessarily be satisfied, because the first two were satisfied. So what is uh, 1 plus 2 uh, in terms of those uh, statements, uh, in terms of those constraints? Um, well, uh, for the x1s, uh, there's, there's two variables, x1 and x2. For the x1s, the coefficients are 1 and minus 1. So when you add those together, uh, you get 0. So we'll have 0x1. Uh, and then again, we'll have 0x2, because we'll have minus 1 and 1 now, so in the opposite order. So plus uh, 0x2. And, uh, and on the right-hand side, so, so this is going to be less than or equal to the right-hand side, which is uh, 1 plus minus 2. Um, so that would have to be true. But of course, the left-hand side is 0, and uh, less than or equal to minus 1, which of course is a contradiction. So there can't be any x that satisfies those two constraints. Um, and so, therefore, this linear program here is infeasible. So, uh, so okay, so this is infeasible. So that's, we did want that. So, um, so let, me, uh, let me just leave that there. Um, okay, so let me actually erase this because we're going to... Um, uh, well, we, we don't need the, need the room, I guess. Um, but the, what we're going to do now is uh, construct the dual. So let me, uh, let me erase this part to just clean that up a bit. Um, so let's construct the dual and see that that is also infeasible. So what will the dual be? Well, it was a particular choice of the linear program so that the primal would give rise to an infeasible dual. Um, we're going to be minimizing the objective function now for the dual. So there's two matrix constraints, there's two dual variables, um, and uh, the coefficients will be these two coefficients here. So we'll be minimizing 1, y1, minus 2, y2. That's the objective function. And uh, the constraints are, uh, well, uh, the matrix is going to be transposed, but uh, actually you see that this matrix is symmetric. Uh, so the transpose of this matrix is equal to itself. Uh, and so, um, so we'll have 1, minus 1, minus 1, 1. We'll have that again. Uh, times the dual variables, y. So by y, we mean the, the vector y1, y2, of course. And, uh, and now that's going to be greater than or equal to the right-hand side components, which will be the coefficients from the primal. So 2 and 3. Uh, and then finally, uh, both of the dual variables, y1 and y2, will be greater than or equal to 0 because of uh, this inequality here. So, um, okay, so this is the dual linear program. So we can call that D. And... Uh, and you can see, again, that this dual linear program will also be infeasible by analogous reasoning as to the primal. So if you add these two constraints together, these two matrix constraints, uh, what happens is that, uh, is that you'll have 0 on the left-hand side, and on the right-hand side you'll have 5. And so you'll have 0 greater than or equal to 5, uh, which of course is a contradiction. And so the dual is infeasible as well. So, in fact, uh, the right-hand side components could have been any two numbers, such that when you add them together, um, it's a positive number. So that 0 greater than or equal to some positive number gives us a contradiction. Um, okay, so, uh, so they're both, both of uh, these linear programs are infeasible, and that's an explicit example of uh, an infeasible-infeasible pair. Uh, so now we can uh, come down to the, uh, to the end here. So what have we been able to conclude? Uh, strong duality uh, combined with weak duality informed us of this entire chart, except for this bottom right uh, possibility, and we now know that as well because we just did an explicit construction, so this is possible. It is possible to have a 
primal infeasible linear program where the dual is also infeasible. So we can put a check mark there. That's kind of a bad check mark. Let me clean that up. Uh, okay, great. So um, these are now all the possibilities that can happen for a primal dual pair of linear programs, uh, as told to us by a more or less weak and strong duality. So we have those two statements, and, uh, and then the corresponding information is captured uh, in this chart. So there's more to say on uh, duality uh, in the future, but that's it for this video. So thank you for watching.